listening to Tiger Cats pregame. Welcome back. Tiger Cats pregame getting set for the Argos in Toronto at BMO Field. And uh, beautiful Friday night for football under the lights in Toronto. Uh, hey, be sure to tune in to Tiger Cats postgame tonight immediately following the final whistle. Andy and I will take you through everything that happened in tonight's game and have exclusive interviews with Coach O and the Tiger Cats players. Bakari Grant going to be stopping by as well for some of our alumnus analysis. But uh, for our Tiger Cats pregame, Presented by Active Green and Ross alumnus analysis. Very pleased to be joined by former offensive lineman Marwin Hage. Marwin, a beautiful night for football. You must have loved these uh, Friday night, early fall, late summer games under the lights. You know what? These are the best nights to play, and especially a, a Monday back to back with a Friday game against Toronto. These these were awesome, you know. And it's the best night to be in Toronto and play and. Hopefully giving them those of Tiger Cat football right in the heart of the, uh, of the city. Hey, Marwan, did, you, did we were just talking about the physical and mental challenges of the short week. And what was your take on it? Did you find it easier uh, to play back-to-back -back with a short week or, or, or harder oh. both physically and mentally? Well, it depends on what stage of my career. Early on in my career, I had no, no problem with it at all. I, I could have played three games in a week. Later, later on in my career, I was starting to feel good right about Friday morning, just for another beating. So the time of recovery later on is brutal. Uh, but I knew the veteran guys I was facing, they were going through the same thing. The worst thing ever is if you're a veteran lineman facing a rookie D lineman, and the kid is just going to be as fresh and as ready to go on Friday that he was on Monday. That is the problem. But then you can beat him with the mental game because that's when you short set and you do all these old dirty lineman tricks to kind of <laughs> to help you and, and, you know, buy you that extra second. So that's how you balance with that experience on hand. I mean, the battle in the trenches, we saw it, right? I mean, we saw the talking, we saw the jawing, and we saw early on the Argos were taking these kind of undisciplined penalties. Uh, what do you make of that? And, 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 and how much of it is, is, is the tie cat side of, okay, here's what we're going to say to get under their skin, and the Argos prep of just don't buy into it, guys? Well, you know, these games are you know a lot of history into these games and a lot of these rookies that come in they don't know the histories but the vet on both sides they're teaching them and you know i remember my first labor day game there were six uh, ejections and i was and i couldn't believe it. i'm like what's going on here we're running out of players and uh you know but then by my second game i was throwing punches left and right and then it just built it's it's one of those healthy rivalries where two teams you know hit each other for to the core I mean, to the absolute core, I, even me today, when I walk by their stadium, I give them thumbs down, right? <laughs> so it's, it's, and I haven't played in a long time. It's, but that's what makes it great. And a lot of the vets will lead the anger and, and the feistiness. And, and that's what makes it great football all around and makes it great for our league. It makes it great for the players to understand the history because the history is scary. If you start looking back into it and they start putting clips on how many fights you know, just the Ivor win games. Oh, my God. It was like a WWF uh, event at one point. So, you know, that's the kind of game it is. But it's healthy for a league as long as it's done with good taste and, and uh, the battles stay on the field within, you know, good limits and it doesn't get overboard. And then, then it's, it's a lot of fun to watch, even for the players to participate in. The thumbs down walking by the stadium is gold. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> we were just it's loyalty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, Marwan, we were just talking about the uh, the consistency in the O line, and you know, as a receiver, I'm I'm thinking about when when you know, say like Tasker, our colleague here, when we were when we used to go and stack together or switch release, and the more we did, the more we were playing with each other, the easier it was to to kind of read and play off each other, and the more success we had. Do you find that that that's the same, uh, uh, like with the, with respect to the offensive linemen? I saw a lot less um, mistakes and technique in the second game together, like on the, on Monday, and and a lot less guys coming up free. Do you find that as with that consistency and and uh, playing together multiple week after week, you get you gain and um, you know a better uh, feel for the guy next to you, and you're able to play faster and off each other a little easier. Absolutely. When the one thing you build uh, by playing together is trust, right? You have to trust that the guy 
to the right of you and to the left of you will do the job will be there if you and then as you play and as you grow you start communicating without communicating then you start you know the more years you put in next you like I remember playing with Peter Dajkowski at the end. There wasn't much talking. It was just like, Peter, I need help here. And just one look and we knew that this is what we're going to do. You know? So you're going to start seeing that. And although in the first few games there were some you know, tough moments, but this is what it takes to build an offensive line. You're not going to – you can put five all-stars together and it's going to take the same amount. They need to go through the battles in the same way uh, as you mentioned. Then you, you can – communicate without communicating because you know what needs to be done and you're going to start seeing this with this offensive line as they start climbing and getting into big games like the Monday game was huge it's a huge confidence builder you know and, and then there was, you're going to start seeing more and more of the offensive line and they're uh, playing well and then eventually they're going to start imposing their, their character on people that's going to get very interesting. Marwin Hage joining us here on Tiger Cats pregame, presented by Active Green and Ross, providing us with some alumnus analysis. Uh, I want to talk about the offensive line on the other side because we have uh, uh, Pat DeCastro, Peter DeCastro, Castro, excuse me, uh, a first round draft pick out of 2021, making his first career start at center, um, a position you know well. What can the Tiger Cats take advantage of in a guy who's making his first career start? under center well i played when coach o was a safety for the Argos in those power power years defense and if i know coach o the player what he'll do to that center i feel bad for him they're gonna confuse the life out of him today this guy you know no one he can probably be a good center i i think he's great, pretty good to start in his rookie year but he probably has no clue what's coming to him. Uh, not as far as phys the mental game. I mean, I remember the, when uh, Coach O and O'Shea were on uh, Argos defense. They throw so many looks. They'll switch it up on the last second. They'll disguise blitzes. And then they'll just overpower him with a big nose. Uh, so I feel bad for the center. It's great that I'm not that guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> but hey. On the other, so you got to have to go through them. I mean, every experienced center had to be a rookie at one point. So, uh, but you know, I hope O opens it up, and you know, they, and they, they go after him. They're gonna have to go after him. You'll see some miscues in the middle. So it's good for us. You're gonna love. Uh, make sure you're listening in for the car star keys to victory later, um, Marwan. But I, I, I love that. Uh, you know. You, Every every marathon begins with a single step, right? And and everybody was a rookie once, and and you're going to make mistakes. And as long as you learn from them and and uh, and don't repeat them too many times, that's how you you know you just keep growing and getting better. So I love that take on it. Definitely, definitely. I mean, and good luck to the kid. Hey. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, listen. If I was lining up uh, alongside you, look up and you see Teddy Laurent, Dylan Wynn, Julian Hauser, and Jagarit Davis, and hey, maybe uh, maybe you rush, uh, maybe you blitz Simone. I mean, that's that's a tall task. Let's talk about the defense real quick because I mean, for the second game in a row, the Ticats' de defensive line looks good, uh, is healthy. That's who kind of who they wanted out there, and their linebackers have been consistent. What have you seen from this Ticats' defense? You think they can uh, continue to build on? Well, you know, great first step. You know, obviously it's a little bit technical from my end because I still watch the game with, with an experienced eye and I look at their first steps, man. They're, they're upfield, and they're attacking, and that's what you want to see. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Teddy, man. I was a fan of Teddy when I played against him and when he joined the Ticats. Uh, I, I love watching him play. He's one of my favorites. Um, so I'm looking forward, you know, get upfield. And, you know, your linebacker's starting to gel. I mean, that was a great pick by Simone last week. Uh, you know, and it's this, this is, you know, the veteran guy coming in and start to build. He's going to rally those guys around him. Uh, but I look, the one thing I really appreciate from their D-line is upfield battles. And that's what you look at. I mean, as an experienced guy. So I hope today, especially with a rookie offensive lineman, I hope Teddy didn't eat too many donuts yesterday because he's going to, he has to give that kid a workout today. Yeah, those Haitian cookies. Uh, I'm sure Teddy is uh, is doing his best staying away. Um, just one more. What's playing in Toronto? Like you said, this is it, you know it's one thing to have the Labor Day here, the rematch, the turnaround, and, and we know that the fans in, in Toronto are passionate. They may not be as uh, numerous as they once were, but uh, what 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 did you like about uh, playing in Toronto as a Thai cat? Well, I love that we always traveled well to Toronto. So half the stadium, and hopefully tonight we'll be half Thai cat fans. So. Uh, and that's how it used to be for us. It felt good and it, it used to get loud. 
and the games are actually pretty good in Toronto, you know, and it's it's a it's a carry on from Monday. So a lot of those storylines that build up on Monday, good or bad, will carry on in this game early. So you'll see some guys going after each other. But uh, it's a beautiful night for CFL game, man. It's, that's what you, we've been waiting for. That's what we were deprived of uh, the last few years. So I think overall it's good for the fans, both sides. It's a great event, great venue. And, you know, it's good for the Ticats to go get that win and start building, you yeah. know, one game at a time. Well said, Marwan. Appreciate this as always. Yeah. Great to talk to you. Hey, guys, Oski Wee let's get it. <laughs> there Thanks, you Marwin. go. Marwin Hage uh, for our alumnus analysis there. And uh, we didn't mention about this earlier, but, uh, you know, the consistency on the Ticats, both offensively and defense. Um, Brandon Banks, obviously, out. we mentioned that. But Siante Evans out as well. Frankie Williams moves from uh, the kind of that corner boundary spot inside and Channing Stribling back in the lineup. Uh, first time since Saskatchewan. We really liked what we saw from, uh, from Channing Stribling that week one game. Against uh, against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. All right, let's uh, roll on here on Tiger Cats pregame, presented by Active Green and Ross, and uh, now time for Bastel's Big Three, presented by Sports 